Okay, guys, I'm going to take you through a trade that I took today on the DAX. I often trade the DAX. It's one of my favorite indices. One of the reasons for that is because it regularly offers good reward to risk opportunities. The candlesticks are large, so the average true range is large compared to the fees that the broker charges for taking each trade. So that's one of the criteria that I look for. And in this video, I'm going to talk you through the trade that I took. It's not a typical trade that you'll see discussed on YouTube. It's not a trade, the sort of trade that I take all the time, but it's a valid trade all the same. And, you know, when I first started trading, probably, you know, a little bit like you, people used to say to me and I used to read, you know, let your winners run and cut your losers short. And I couldn't quite work out how to do that. And in this video, I'm going to talk through the analysis that I use now that enables me to judge targets and to judge risk. And in theory, if the volatility is right in the market, you can go short, you can go long at pretty much any stage in the market cycles. You can go long or short pretty much any time. And other people won't tell you that, but that is what trading's like. Short term trading, because the market goes up, the market goes down. There are some times that sometimes in the market where you just can't go long and there are some times where you just can't go short. And you've got to be able to judge that too. And there are other times where, you know, the probability is high that the market is going to continue once it's gone down, going down. And the market, the probability is high when the market's going up that the market is going to continue going up. And then it's just a question of judging the risk that you're going to take on the trade and making, setting a sensible risk for the trade and also making sure that the market has the potential to meet a reward target, which is at least the same as your risk. So there are some things about this trade that I didn't like. It was a little random in terms of where I set my stop and a little random in terms of where I had to place my target. And I dealt with that during the trade. I adjusted things during the trade and made sure that I used my experience to get the best possible result from the trade. And I'm going to talk you through now all of that. Enjoy. So I've entered into a short trade. I entered into the short trade on, this is the five minute chart here. I entered here as the market was going down. And this is the one minute chart. And I entered at the end of this big spike down here. The market just went up, rejected slightly, started coming down again, and I entered short. Okay, there was, there was plenty right about my analysis for taking this trade and there was plenty wrong about the execution of it. Okay, so looking at the longer term analysis, so this is my master time frame or my control time frame, the five minute chart, and this is the one minute chart, which is the trading time frame. So I'm using analysis of the master time frame and the market had a big move up and that was this morning and then a big reversal at the top here. This bar was a fairly large green bar taking us up and it was followed by a huge red rejection bar so the market was rejecting these highs and it did even go up and test the high here. This was a big rejection. The close was well below the open of the previous green bar and market came down. Another huge red bar here 
and so high, lower high, lower high, low, lower low, lower low. The market's making lower highs and lower lows, so the market's in a downtrend. So I got that bit right. <laughs> I wanted to enter short. The market pushed up, failed, pushed up, failed, pushed up and made a new high, which will have dragged in lots of traders going long, hoping for a reversal of this back up to the 12,300 level at least. And that failed. So that failed and it failed with a massive red bar. Now this translates on the one minute time frame to this move down here is this move down here on the five minute chart. So these are one minute candles, five minute candles. And the way back up was this move here. So which is stronger, this move down or this move back up? Well, obviously there are big, big, big red bars here. And this is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So I would say that this is stronger. Also, the high here, this was a lower high, as you can see, lower high. And therefore, in my view, the bears were in control. And the bears were in control and they were exerting their control. And this bar, huge red bar here, shows me they were exerting their control. The market came up to a, a level of value for the bears and the bears all stepped in and went short. And so the, the logic for my trade here was that we've got a big, big, big red bar, the biggest bar on the chart and we're going to get some follow through. Now, normally what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm actually trading chart patterns and I'll have a set risk and reward that I'll be looking to take on these type of trades. This is slightly different and I very rarely enter after a bar that's as big as this because quite often what you find is the market goes right back up to the entry price of the big, big bar. But given the climate, I felt that it was worth the risk. Now, you can see my entry here. My stop, protective stop is here. And it's at these highs here. And the logic behind that is that, well, first of all, um, it fits the lows within this bunch of price action here and the high here. So the logic really is that it, the price would have to motor its way through all of these prices here and get past that and the exponential moving averages, get through the exponential moving averages from here up past the 8 the 20 and the 90 exponential moving averages, which are all in a nice line, which is confluence for my trade. And so it would have to get through all of that in order to reach my stop, which was at a 10 point stop. Okay. And my target was 20 points. So the risk to reward or the reward to risk, two to one risk to reward, one to two on this particular trade. Now, the limit, this is the limit to take me out for a profit, is placed at exactly two to one, which was 10 was my risk, 20 the reward. The limit order is placed just below these lows here. That's okay because high, lower high, lower high, low, lower low, expected, lower low. So that's okay. You know, it may come down here and bounce up, but you should make another lower low. It's in a downtrend on this particular time frame. However, there are some problems with that. There are some problems with that. 
as there often are with these type of situations. There's some problems and the problem is here that this is a round number 12,250 and it's in the way of price reaching target and also that the market has been trading above this line here which is the 90 exponential moving average on the five minute chart and very often what you find is that it'll reach these levels and then it'll bounce upwards and try and go upwards. So there are some issues that I need to consider during this trade. Okay, now I'm definitely not going to be exiting this trade for any less than one to one reward to risk. One to one reward to risk was just about achieved here. So this was the reward that I could have had and this was my risk, but not quite. So at 12,250, I'm going to have more than one to one reward to risk. And so that's going to be an attractive target for me. It could be that if this bar starts, these bars start accelerating down, that I hang on because quite often the market's going to spike right down here. However, if it doesn't go like that, I'm going to consider exiting at the round number level for just over one to one or just about one to one reward to risk because that's about right for this type of trade I've entered late okay the market's gone below these levels here it's powered down but the market doesn't go on forever and it will you know just in one direction it will go up and then try and come back down and the question is if it goes up will it come back down far enough to make my target or will it fail and move back up and so I'm going to be keeping an eye on the candlesticks to see take my lead from them as to what actually happens one other thing to bear in mind of course is that if the market comes down to this level here 12,250 my limit orders here which is just six seven points below that level and my stop is right up here. So when the market gets to this level, what's my risk? Well, my risk is that the market goes straight back up here. So my risk is, you know, 22 points and my potential reward at that stage, because I could just exit the trade here, my potential reward is seven points. So that's not a great risk to reward or reward to risk equation at that stage and that needs taken into consideration bearing in mind that the probability of the trade being successful once it reaches this level here and perhaps stalls at this level here the chances of the trade being or the probability of it being successful and reaching this target and add into the equation the risk and the re potential reward the mathematical equation is not necessarily going to be right unless I think well these candlesticks indicate that there's maybe one more candlestick needed to reach target so on the one minute time frame the market was in an uptrend it was making higher high higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, high, and higher lows. It was in an uptrend and then it made a lower low, low, lower low, and it made a higher high and then came down and made another lower low with a big red bar. So the market's sort of, <laughs> sort of in a, in a downtrend, although in order for a downtrend to be valid, you'd need to have a lower high and there is no lower high. So the market has to put in a lower high before it makes the downtrend valid on this particular time frame. And at the moment it isn't. So if it hasn't done that by the time it reaches the 12,250, you can expect it to go up to make that lower high before it comes back down. Hope this is all making sense. 
So this is what happened next and you'll, you can see that my order is no longer there. And why is my order no longer there? It's no longer there because the market rejected. This bar came down to 12,250 and closed above it with a rejection spike at the bottom and I exited at 12,250, the round number. And so the market came back up. The market came back up and it started retesting these highs and it could well have been putting in a lower high but at this stage I knew you know I, I'd exited I'd exited my trade down here very close to target so the potential extra reward that I could have got was low the risk that I would have taken was huge because this could easily now go straight back up here and take me out of my trade okay as it happens <laughs> this is where we left it the market took an hour basically to make all its make its way down all the way down and it this trade would have made target as the market started projecting off the 90 exponential moving average on the one minute time frame and the market came down on the five minute time frame and never closed above the 20 exponential moving average. It followed the moving averages, the short term moving averages all the way down. So lots of things I didn't like about that particular trade. However, the probability of making at least one to one reward to risk was high and therefore worth a shot in my view based on this huge red bar and the chances of continuation which is what we got so hope you enjoyed that video my name's anthony beardsell join us at the excellence assured trading academy for an education into pro trading trade for a living with excellence assured my name's Anthony Beardsell. Thanks ever so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.